just an hydraulic down there. So yeah. Yeah. Just an opinion. I'll take a set of wrenches. <laughs> <laughs> And it's super simple. I know what lock they didn't use. Exactly. Adjust the lock. Lock the That sounds about right. It's a, it sounds like a tactic. Yep. Good morning, Ed. As it, as it is 8.32, I will call to order the May 22nd Public Welfare Subcommittee meeting. The clerk will please call the roll. Council Matt. Present. Council Lowers. Present. Council Present. Present. Is anybody recording this meeting? The purpose of this meeting is the FY25 budget hearings. This meeting is to give each city department head the opportunity to present and discuss their budget with the subcommittee that the department is associated with. In this case, the Public Welfare Committee. We thank you for your efforts in, in preparing the budget and your presence here this morning. This year, we do have a new format of the budget, which includes a narrative from each department. I found this personally to be very helpful as it provided us more information from each department. I'd like to commend the mayor and the department heads for the efficient way in which the budget was compiled and presented to the council earlier this month as the information and explanations are very much appreciated. This meeting will allow for us to ask any questions we may have um, for the mayor and the department heads to address your budgetary needs. The city council um, is important as well for the people to know that we can only reduce the amount of a line item from the mayor's budget, we are now allowed to increase it. We will start with the first department, which is the golf department. Mr. Franks. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'll give you a quick update on membership and all things in regards to finance. Um, the membership currently is around 670 members, which is outstanding. Um, I have to think that conservatively we'll have probably around 750. Um, as it stands right now, we're about $162,000 in the good um, revenue versus expenses. We can probably conservatively say um, that that will end fiscal year with the next five weeks, probably $200,000, $225,000, um, which would add to our surplus um, of close to $900,000. Um, right now it's $620,000. Um, so because we're an enterprise budget, we try to be as conservative with everything as we can. Um, and we're finding the last couple of years that we've run into some infrastructure type stuff. Um, 100,000 of that split between this fiscal and probably the next fiscal um, will go directly into the pump house. Um, it's an aging pump house, um, but there's other things on the golf course that are basically exactly like that. Um, we're looking to do some cart path projects, um, building maintenance, um, and overall upgrades to the course. So it's all stuff that's going to cost money, um, but for the first time in a long time we have it. Um, so I'm trying to think of any other ones. Salaries and wages, we know that. Um, the pump house project we spoke about. Um, and then we actually did a new golf cart lease, a new five year lease. Um, and that's gone up one and a half, almost one and three quarter times. So um, just every expense is going up across the board. So money in, money out. Um, if I may, Madam Chairman. So the uh, wages are just like the other non-union employees that we have a 3% cost of living adjustment built into the budget. That's where you'll see a difference between the department requests that came in and that when we put out the budget originally, we said a 2%. Uh, we increased that to a 3% to just try to make these positions a little more marketable uh, and to show some value to our non-union employees as well. Uh, additionally from that, again, this is an enterprise fund, so all the funds in here are not tax dollars. They're revenue collected by the golf course through mainly memberships and other sources. Uh, so anything that they don't use in that fund just falls back to the fund in the end. Uh, so it, unlike the other departments, this is one that uh, really is a, lot, a little bit more wiggle room that we have with this one here. Uh, but it's great that we are making those capital improvements into the golf course and uh, Director Frank and his team have just been doing a really great job down over there getting things going and getting things up to where they need to be. You answered my question on the golf course rental increase. My only other question was on the vehicle supplies. As of this year, it was like an eight thousand, and it's, for, it's budgeted for, for thirty-five thousand. Yeah, and that's just aging equipment. You know, it, prior to you know, our, our main objective was to get that surplus at mm -hmm. five hundred thousand. We got to six, um, and that was with band aids. So now we're pulling the band aids off and replacing and repairing things the right way. Um, and just the cost of, of repairs mm -hmm. is it's bananas right now. So um, takes money. No further questions, Councilor. I, I, I do. Uh, all right. I'm just trying to look at this from what I remember 10 years ago. Golf Pro is now an employee, not 
uh, an outside contractor? Correct. Okay. And his staff. And so there's, there's a, okay, and the pro shop we're paying for the staff. Okay. Laborers, um, I think when I left there were four. Yeah. And so, so we have more, and I'm talking about the In regards to full-time full benefit, time. correct. It's still four. Still four, okay. And then the clerk. Uh, excuse me, five. We've added one more. There is five. There is five, okay. yeah. Todd and Tony. And then the clerk used to be shared with another department. Is that still the case? Is that yes. still still the case? It's uh, Christine and HR. <laughs> yep. HR. Yep. So still HR, still. The, the, the clerical and HR is split between the city and? And the golf course. And the golf course. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Got it. Oh. Right. All set. Dismissed? You're dismissed. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good time. Thanks. Uh, the Senior Center, Council on Aging. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. We have the Chair of the Council on Aging and the Treasurer of the Council on Aging here with us since the Director wasn't able to join us. Uh, the Senior Center. Uh, department budget uh, is pretty much level funded from last year aside from the 3% cost of living adjustment for the non-union employees uh, that covers the non-union employees just the director uh, the clerical staff is covered by the AFSCME union uh, as well as the custodial staff is covered by the AFSCME union as well I uh, happen to answer any questions that the committee has the director did provide his uh, narrative uh, that is included in this packet uh, so that uh, if there's any questions that you know he could have answered uh, that was the goal with the narratives with each department right now is if you know we could try to pre-answer any questions that were there or clarify any of the reasoning behind the numbers rather than just show the numbers uh, that that information is there for you but if there's any remaining questions we're still happy to answer those I had no questions um, I know that we already voted for some of the um, repairs or like the air conditioning yes. and stuff where we already voted for. Um, I was just um, over, you know, interested to see some of the, the items that you do need for your programming, right. um, your wish list. And, um, you know, I, I would I would love to see you get some of those. And I would, you know, um, especially, you know, how important a new bingo board would be for you. So I would love to see you put like a wish list out and probably, you know, seek out some funds, some, mm -hmm. some donors, like some sponsors, maybe from the banks and stuff and other community organizations. I would love to see some people step forward and assist you because your programs are just so important to our citizens. And I, I love everything that you do. Um, and, um, you know, whatever we can do as a council to help, you know, seek out some of those, you know, to me, they're important. They're, they're really important items and they're, they're not really expensive items. Uh, th that I see that you need to offer, you know, your services to people. Um, but I had no further questions. The director's um, narrative was pretty exhaustive, mm -hmm. explaining quite a bit. It was several pages um, long, so I think any kind of questions we may have had have been answered. Um, and just kudos to both the director and folks at Health there for all the great work you do. You're welcome. All set. All set. All right. All right. I, just want, I just want to say thank you for supporting the senior center and all that. We have terrific uh, groups. The place is full almost every day. So it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. I, hear, I just hear constant fabulous things and I can't <coughs> wait till you move to a bigger, I better space waiting. with better parking. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, floor. one floor. One floor. All one floor. One floor. Exactly. No accident. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Next up is the library. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning. And before we start, I just want to say that I am a uh, member of the Library Association. And, and I, 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 a director of the library. Okay, and I am on the association. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the library's budget, you'll see the narrative that uh, Director Young uh, submitted with her budget. Uh, again, a 3% cost of living adjustment for non union employees. All of them are non union employees uh, who work for the library. Uh, the uh, everything else is the same. The books and periodicals line item that's set for by uh, regulation uh, that has to be a certain percentage of the overall budget in order for the library to maintain its certifications. Uh, and everything else is pretty much um, general in the guidelines of what we had last year with it. Uh, there were some changes that Director Young has recently made to the library that I think are moving the library in the direction that it needs to be going. 
uh, recently with uh, making the library a fine-free facility to make sure that it's a more equitable uh, location for members of the city and not having to worry about paying late fines and anything like that. I think it's great. Um, I was just telling Stephanie before we started here, my office actually gets calls complimenting you know, Stephanie on the work that she's done over there in the library as a whole. And I think this is the first time in the four years that I've been here that we've gotten that many calls over the span of just two weeks. Um, so I really think we're very lucky to have Stephanie and her team here in Gardner, and I couldn't be prouder of the work that she's been doing. Thank you. Um, there, I make no secret that my first job in the city of Gardner at 14 was at the library. <laughs> um, and I'm a huge proponent. I was just part of the focus group that they had. Um, I think Stephanie is a breath of fresh air to our, our library and the programming that she's offering. I commend the Saturday preschool, which I know Council Journal always takes advantage of for parents that work during the week. And I just, I see nothing but positive things happening there. And um, over the next few years, I'm just anxious to see all the, the, the new things that you will be offering. Mm -hmm. uh, I know as part of that focus group that you were looking for funding to increase the hours of the library. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's not happening in this budget, mm -hmm. but um, in the future, that's something that I would be a proponent for and I would really like to see happen great. because it is uh, a great asset. We have many people that can't you know, access Wi-Fi and it's a safe center for a lot of people, even just in the summer for to go somewhere for air conditioning and Cool and just, um, you know, my history with the, the school department was that we used it, a lot of kids used it there for after school tutoring. Mm -hmm. We used it there for our, you know, our paid tutors would, is, you know, it's a nice um, place for, for them to meet people. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, it, it really is, along with the golf course, the senior center, it's another great asset that we have. Yeah. And I just think our support of it is important. And um, I appreciate your narrative was excellent. And I thank you for all you've done in your brief time with us already. Thank you. Councilor Brooks. Also, yeah, as you stated, the program, the program there is fantastic. Um, and the events, the, you know, Bluey came uh, recently. <laughs> and that was a big hit. We weren't able to go, unfortunately. 320 uh, people yeah. in an hour and a half and for Bluey. Wow. And then the solar eclipse event was yeah, the massive does, yeah. amount yeah. of people across the lawns everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, that. So that was fantastic. Um, Get ready for the summer reading kickoff. What's that? Get ready for the summer reading. Summer reading. Oh, that's going to be okay. something this year. I hope um, so. So it's, you know, it's a beautiful building. It's funny to hear that it's now 20 years old. Um, but I see that it's brand new. Uh, just thank you for all the, all the work. Thanks. Um, like the high school. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the only thing I, I do want to bring up, eventually the energy and utilities, mm -hmm. that one has been level funded over the last few, few years, and the cost is going up. I'm going to be about $14,000 over budget on the energy and utilities this year. Um, we are using state aid funds to balance the budget at the end of the year. Um, and I sat down and talked to John Richard and he recommended that I um, talk to procurement to see if we were able to get into the city's um, energy saving uh, program yeah. right through the electric bill, yeah. which we weren't on. So we're trying to see if we can get creative in any way to reduce that budget. Um, but the state aid funds are something that I'm able to use for increased programming, and I don't have a programming line item, so I have to be creative of how we're going to pay for all this new programming, although I think the city needs the programming that we're, we're doing. Um, so this year, because of the utilities and, of course, the association pays for all of the building maintenance, and we're using the state aid through that, we are basically using what we've earned this year. And um, as you talked about getting um, some more open hours at the library, hopefully next year I, I can put in for that. Um, right now, we're open 45 hours a week and a library, our population, the standard should be 50 hours a week. So we're falling below that standard and because of that, we're receiving less money in state aid, um, which is well explained in the, um, the documentation that I gave you. So, but I think we can do a lot with what we have this year and I think this budget is really helping and um, the 3% increase is helping with the staffing and, and we're going to do the best that we can and hopefully next year we can be open on Saturdays. It's, it's really something that people are asking for through the um, long range plan study that we're doing. Yes. Yeah. Um, there was no discussion of the library being part of the solo project. I was just thinking that as she was talking about seeing if that's something we can talk about after. Yeah, we'd have to go through yeah. the association because yeah. they own the building and, yeah. and have a discussion about that. But that that could be an opportunity. We'd, we'd have to yeah. see what that entails, I think. Yeah. And, and I have to say the uh, relationship between the association and the city has always been Correct. very 
okay. positive one. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that would would be really um, something that we that should be looked into because that savings might very easily fund the five hours if you can oh. find money for the you know to right. bring back savings to the city right. and and the buyback of, of, of solar uh, to fund to fund the five hours because to me the five hours I think is would be really cost efficient for the city to do as well. It'd be cost efficient and you know you'd be putting in to the more staffing, which means more programming and more time right. for people. There's, mm-hmm. there's so many. And more benefits. money back from the state. Yeah. So you have to, yep. so, exactly. you know, so you have to figure that all out. But that's, I would, uh, that would be something yeah. to look Great. into. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Isabel, the airport. Good morning. Good morning. So, Madam Chair and Council, you'll see that this is a pretty level funded budget, mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately. And I say unfortunately because yeah. the work is there specifically for the airport director to be a full time position if we had the money to do it. Um, right now, director, uh, I mean, uh, the director is working for 19 hours a week um, for 40 hours worth of work in a 19 hour period. Um, there's de- so we are, that is something that is on our long-term plan to see if we can bump that up to a full-time position at some point. Um, but for now, uh, keeping it at 19 hours and everything else is pretty level funded from last year, except for uh, repairs and maintenance, uh, which really is you're just getting the upkeep of what we needed to do and what we put off for years. And kind of the airport was kind of that one thing that just we didn't really put too much money into for a very long time until we needed to when now we're realizing we're trying to catch up to where we should have been a couple years ago. Uh, and if there's any questions, the director and I are happy to answer those. I just said a couple with the telecommunications line and vehicle supplies line, a uh, vehicle supplies line item. Um, those seems historically have been higher than what's budgeted. Or is that something that's going to have to be made up for later on? Well, it's probably something we'll take a look at when we do the supplemental budget, but the city auditor ba- did that based off of trends that we have right now and spending trends. Um, this isn't the only department that telecommunications uh, was one of those that was reduced and probably we're going to just monitor throughout the fiscal year. Okay. I just want to commend you for going after people who, you know, were past due in their rent for their hangers and stuff, and that's um, long overdue, and it's it's too bad that it, it went on so long. I mean, yes. you know, 20 years, um, you know, and, and stuff. And I, I just want to commend you for everything that you've done working I mean, I, want, I don't want to say working, being paid part-time and doing a full-time job for everything you've done to get the grants and to redo the building, you know, in, in, down at the airport. We met there for, you know, our last meeting, and I was really impressed because I saw it before, um, and, the, you know, all the applications and everything that you've done, and, you know, getting, you know, free equipment like a snowblower, and I, I really commend you, and I really appreciate all the work you're putting in, and I agree with the mayor that... I mean, you know, if, if the funds are there, it should be a full-time position, and hopefully that will happen in the future. It should be, yeah. Absolutely. There should, really should be um, a person there all uh-huh. the time. And um, for people coming in, airplanes coming in, and also for safety, you know, right. just uh, to be able to call someone, uh, you know, if, if, if something happens or, or whatever. And um, if I could just say about the repairs, we've done quite a bit, but there's still quite a bit to do. Yeah. You know, we want to... Uh, we want to paint the outside of the building. Mm-hmm. As you know, it's metal and it's rusting, and we we'd like to you know get that finished too. And all the trim around the windows is rotted, so that has to be removed and put back. Um, and paint right now is seventy five dollars a gallon. <laughs> That's a very big task. But yes. um, I, I did share, and I mentioned this to you before. I did share it with the um, building commissioner, but. Um, and the purchasing director, the contact person, when we had our Monty Tech Budget Committee meeting, he did say the superintendent to reach out to him and um, he would look at doing some projects within the city of Gardner. So mm-hmm. maybe the window repair and stuff like that, um, if, wherever we can, can seek out some, mm-hmm. some volunteer assistance might be helpful. Okay. Um, and I think the airport would be a great place to start. Um, so, um, but um, I do, you know, the airport and, and the activities that you want to offer, I mean, as I said, I'm dating myself, but growing up, the airport was a very busy place for us to go down and, mm-hmm. and see things, and I, I would like to see that happen again. Yes, and it could be a revenue maker mm-hmm. for yes, the city. Uh, the rents are low, the lowest all around the area. They could be raised. You know, we don't want to gouge people because it's a municipal airport. But on the other hand, um, 
we don't want people to just store airplanes and things there. We want them to actually use them and activity to be going on. And uh, so it could be a big revenue maker for the city if we, you know, lifted it up a little. And that takes time and effort to do. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. Councilor Brooks. Uh, yes, I, I think that the airport can be a good asset for the city. I think the challenge is in making it, uh, making the community feel like it's important. Um, my experience, maybe here, but and, and also in, in Pittsburgh, is that in some respects the airport was considered a club, and it was for a, a select group of people who had planes and so on and so on. And I think the challenge in getting more money in a time when, when money is going to be tight, mm -hmm. money is going to be tight for the next few years. <clears throat> but it, to, to have it is, is to give the community a reason for putting money into it. Yep. And it's not just about shining things that we can look at and we can't use, but mm -hmm. um, having something that the community, uh, that builds a community and, and adds to the community. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, nothing else. Nothing else. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Cable TV, Mr. Drosty. Good morning. So, uh, as of the other departments, the 3% cost of living adjustment for the non union employees, that's all three employees in this department. Uh, this is not an enterprise account, but it's a reserve account, uh, meaning that it's paid for by a fee that's attached on the bills of everyone who has a Comcast cable subscription in the city. That money comes into the city, it's put in a reserve account can only be used for funding cable operations, uh, and then anything they don't use falls back into the reserve account. Why it's, they don't just call it an enterprise account, like mm -hmm. basically what it is, uh, is state law. Um, but uh, it is uh, set, it's set up the way it's set up, uh, that this is what we believe the operations of the department should be uh, moving forward. Uh, the director's narrative is there. Uh, it's pretty much a simple, budget compared to th how things have been in the past uh, and the programming that GETV has been doing has just continued to grow um, and I'm very ha very happy with the work that uh, Director Josty and his team have been doing uh, in getting the information out there to the public. It's really been helpful. Nothing else? I have no questions. I had no questions. I just thank you for all your programming. Love the increase of the winter sports broadcasting um, and, and everything you're your, um, department does. Um, I think, you know, um, the Hubbard Conference from wiring was, was a great, is a great idea. I don't know, you know, how extensive that would be, but. Yeah, I, I would have to get a quote on that when it comes through. That's my future plan. Like mm -hmm. if, if we had had, a, you know, unlimited money, that would have been a project because I do estimate that it would probably be around forty, fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars because running the fiber through this building. The run the cameras would be, uh, it was hard enough to get this one room rewired with the fiber, so. Just crawl through the spaces. Yeah, well, what, we're, what I was thinking of doing was actually just building out the cameras there where there's a plug-in for, mm -hmm. for the system out where it's in the hallway instead of having them run all the stuff on the floor. But that's that's something we're definitely, I'm going to, over the next year, I'm going to be looking at, and, and if we can, we'll come back the next year. If the monies are good, we'll, we'll move forward with that. Um, one of the things I did want to point out that the mayor and I had looked at in the budget is uh -huh. the longevity account. Um, I had put in one amount, um, mm -hmm. and then the mayor had boosted it up, and there was a little confusion we had had yep. um, in communications that the mayor thought I had left out a person, and unfortunately, uh, this past year, we Matt uh, <laughs> Zero had moved on to another directorship of another station. Um, very happy with the person, uh, Shane Brown, that we have now. He, he's... Uh, He's very good. He's the one who's actually real gun ho to get sports going. The plan is uh, fall sports as well, football and soccer and things that are played on Watkins Field um, to be able to do. That's where the 10000 in the budget is hopefully going to buy a, a new mini system for him to have at the school to be able to go out and do those productions. Um, as you notice, we cut the budget uh, by $10,000 for the new equipment this year. Yeah. Um, and uh, actually, we're currently looking at one thing. We're actually trying it out for the Relay for Life. We were lucky. A, co a company that's over in Devons called Comrex is a communications, point-to-point -point communications. They use it for broadcasting from, like, the, from the camera to the satellite trucks um, to be able to have a thing mounted in our rack in our TV station where we'll be able to broadcast where we have internet. Um, 
you know, depending on the situation. And one of the things we looked at was whether or not, you know, nothing's for sure yet because we don't own it, but uh, to be able to helps with Relay for Life, it'll help with sports if we decide to go yeah. live with them down the road. Graduation. It'll, it'll help with graduate. Well, we might even try that this year. I don't know. Yeah. But it depends on how a couple things work out with testing. Um, and it, the other thing is it has the advantage that it has, um, as long as we have SIM cards, um, that it can actually be used on a cellular network back to the thing. And it is about $17,000 system to, to purchase. So that is not in this budget at this point. I do have funds left in my new equipment budget this year and I'm trying to get it. If we like how it is when we test it, we may try to move forward with that before the end of this budget year. Um, even if we have to buy the two main units and then go back and buy the cellular components later. So um, we're trying to improve where we can shoot from live. As you read in the narrative too, and as I've done with the other departments in all the committees about where we could be working towards or some type of long-term plan, understanding that we do have to live within our means and can only do what we can with the money that we have. Uh, one of the things that the, uh, Director Joss and I have talked about is the productions, uh, productions assistant line item right now. It's a part-time position uh, because again, it's paid for only out of the cable funds. Uh, so if you look at the meetings that are covered by GETV are those meetings that are broadcasted on cable because we can't use their staff to film something that's then not put on the cable TV show because then they're doing non-cable work on the cable subscriber's dime for to, to benefit those that don't have a cable subscription. Uh, so what we could do in the long term is see if we can uh, subsidize a, some of that with city funds to make that a full-time position. That way that uh, person in the department could do both city work and cable work, and whether it's a meeting like this that's not mm -hmm. gonna air on the GETV station, but it's something that does get brought, uh, you know, posted on the city's YouTube channel or in other means. That way we can record those meetings that way. But it's something we just simply can't do right now under the Emerson case and the other different regulations that control how you can use certain funds. Uh, and you can't take cable funds to benefit non-cable users if it doesn't also benefit those cable users at the same time. And the other thing that the mayor and I have been working on in conjunction with Comcast is uh, the possibility of another channel yes. that would be run by GETV. The mm -hmm. college has their channel. Yeah. Um, and then there's the possibility of a second channel coming along. Um, and if that was the case, then we would definitely, we'd probably be building that channel into our strictly government channel, um, separate the government and the school and the local mm -hmm. activities. And at that point, then we would really seriously need to talk about GETV picking up a full, that full person uh, because we would be doing more meetings like these to be able to put on television. If you picked up another channel, would they give you more funding? It does not. Okay. It still is the same bills. We have to operate, you know, we're still yeah. only getting yeah, the return. So. And as people start to cut the cord, we have not really seen a hit in it yet here. Yeah. Um, but as people start to cut the cord and go to strictly streaming, we do not get any part of uh, internet revenues. Right. Yeah. So it's strictly cable revenue. So as people cut the cord, there's eventually will be less funding uh, for line. us. But I have tried very hard in my you know, couple decades of being here is to not over budget where we are um, so that I could always leave money every year for continuing down the road. So I was going to say, that's a long-term dilemma yeah. for this mm -hmm. yeah. operation is, right. that, is it as a People get off of cable TV and there are no more fees collected, but less fees. There's actually a bill that's being worked on by Mass Access and, and a few other organizations that do local access television um, to petition uh, for a bill for the state to actually include the internet charges um, because of the streaming services. Because there are ways that I could probably, with the right funding, get stuff on. If we had to go exactly. strictly internet based, we could do that besides just YouTube. Um, so I just want you to know where the situation is. In the, re the revenue answer is going to come out of Boston. It's not going to come Correct. Through. Correct. Correct. It has to be changed to the law. Okay. The only other thing I is uh, you noted a reconnecting with the school um, for the and having uh, yeah. students. Help. So, so over the last few years, uh, I used to be a part-time co-teacher. Um, probably about two hours, three hours of my day was spent in the uh, in the classroom. I used to have a co-teacher, Mark Kobel, and when, when the mayor was a student, we used to do it. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, because of numbers of students signing up for the class, instead of having a 15-person number for the class, we had 10. The class ended up being cut, um, and it just has never come back. But uh, Principal Bulger and I have a pretty good working relationship, and we were actually just talking about 
we've been talking about starting up some type of club, especially if Shane is going to start producing more and more sports. Yeah. Do, these cannot sports aren't good to be done on robotic cameras. They can't. They don't move fast enough to stay with sports. You need someone on a camera. Um, so that's what he's hoping between using Andy and any time he has left from his shooting meetings at night um, to being able to get some students involved and teach them. Because we have a number of students that we worked with in the past who have gone on to work in the field and had very successful careers. Mm -hmm. One of them is the biggest one who never even took the class but came and volunteered was Nate Haney. Mm -hmm. who's over yeah. at Mount Wachusett, yeah. but has had a career with ESPN mm -hmm. and Nesson and been on the sideline for Super Bowls. Yeah. Um, I had friends who, I believe, you know, years ago, been in the, in the 90s, and they've been, you know, like, for the Red Sox, and yep. I think Christian Art up at the Mounds yeah. well as part of the program. Yeah. So. Yeah. And Councilor, uh, Pest Council Walsh's uh, son, Brian, Brian. Uh, w went, did work with us, produced something for us during the summertime, and then um, went on to work, and he works as an editor and, and, and stuff in New York City now. And, Another one ended up going into Silicon Valley, um, but he has learned how to be able to program for video with the stuff that he was doing. One went on to be PR for the Red Sox. Um, so, yeah. you know, I think it's, it was an important class, so we're trying to bring something back, and if not, at least get some type of club that That'd be great. that yeah. works with it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. I'm going to move ZB down to the do planning board if that's okay. Sure. All right. Um, veterans, we'll do, I'm going to do, let the people here go first, Mayor. Yeah. And then we'll do Greenwood Pool and the rest of the other. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So veterans, yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you'll see the budget here is pretty much level funded from last year aside from the 3% cost of living adjustment for uh, the non-union staff. Uh, the veterans benefit line item is one that we're going to be monitoring throughout the course of the fiscal mm -hmm. year. Uh, we're monitoring it currently for this fiscal year too um, to see if there's any additional funds that have to be added there. Um, that's one you never really know with what comes up each individual year because there's certain things that if a veteran who's a client uh, makes more money due to certain reasons, then they become ineligible for benefits. But if they also go on VA benefits, you can't double dip, and VA benefits mm -hmm. technically give more than ours. So there's certain things there that we monitor throughout. So that is a, you know, just something that we're going to continue to monitor to see how much we need um, throughout the course of the year. Um, and the, I'm sure Director Gabrilla uh, can help explain anything else. You have her narrative that's also in there that answers a lot of questions about what the operations of the department are like. Um, as you all know, we are unfortunately losing uh, Director Gabrilla, who will soon be Deputy. Uh, I, I, it's too many words. For it me is so right many. Now. It's Deputy Chief Engagement Officer for Peer Support and Outreach. For the it's a real mouthful. For the Secretariat of Veterans Affairs at the new uh, Governor's Cabinet level uh, Secretariat that was created, so she'll be working for the Commonwealth. Uh, Assistant Director Hasselman has accepted the position of Director. Uh, so he'll be taking over on June 1st, and we're going to be posting the Assistant Director of Veterans Services. That director, uh, the, both the Director and the Assistant Director position by state law are required to be veterans themselves. Um, and there's certain trainings that have to go with the positions too, but I believe Director Hasselman will do fine in the job because Director Gabrilla has really set the stage for a very successful department. Um, just a fantastic job uh, in this role. We are going to miss you. Thank you. Uh, congratulations on your new, uh, new position with the state. Um, the only question I have um, is about the veteran benefits. Um, my understanding is right. That line item is for the, our city yes. own veterans and not for the not for the regional, the no. regional, Correct. right? The regional, Correct. The, the other communities. That's the line item in that budget. Okay. Right. So we have a separate budget for each community that's in our district um, with that town. So um, this veteran benefits is only just for Gardner. Okay. Thank you. Reason being is the reimbursement we receive comes through the cherry shoot process through the state budget. Uh, we get 75% back of what we spend on those. Uh, so that goes directly to the community. So the, each community will budget that in their own budget for their share of best cost. Uh, the veterans office here just helps manage and submit the bills for those departments. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And, th and those communities pay us yes. for the administrative support. Yes. So the three, set, there are three, three people in that office yep. and the salaries are here. That's hundred percent of the salaries. Yes. And the other communities don't pay any of that salary directly. They pay it through the city guard. Correct. But the money that we get in from the other municipalities does not go towards these three salaries. We did, we have not increased these three salaries. 
Correct. With the extra yes. work that they're doing. Correct. That's which something is, that we need. Which to is the problem. Yeah. It's a, it's right. A which is the problem. Question. Yeah. 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 Which, which is, was fearful of why we'd be losing such an excellent veterans director is because we're not paying them enough, and um, and I think the salary survey just supported that she's the lowest paid person I believe in City Hall and um, for departments for the departments and. Um, and, and, it, and it's true, I think we have to look at if we're going to have these agreements with other municipalities that the people who are taking on the work need to be compensated appropriately. Um, but your narrative was fabulous about the increased amount of veterans claims that your, your department is doing. It just supports the need of, you know, not only the services of the veterans department, you know, agency and department for services, but, um, you know, how valuable um, it is to have, you know, competent people in that department and, you know, and, and what the needs of um, our area veterans are. But I just, I, I can't say enough of, you know, um, in your brief time here, how much you've done and, and how much, you know, we appreciate your efforts um, and that we need to continue to, you know, to fund our veterans department. And, um, and in, in, in many department roles, consistency is important. But I think with veterans and you know what they've experienced, to they form a relationship with the people yeah. in your department, and as they're starting their claims and, and they, they form an attachment, um, that I think this is one department that we need to be aware of, that we need to 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 you know get people who are going to want to stay and be able to stay, be so that they can um, they can afford to live. So, um, but I thank you for your service in your your budget. As I said, was very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anything else? Thank you. Thank you so much. I'd also like just like to say yeah. that um, Corey has my full confidence in this mm -hmm. position, and I think he's going to be phenomenal. We're very fortunate he's choosing to stay. Yes, we are. We're very lucky. And don't forget us. Yeah, no, not at all. You guys are stuck with me forever now. So. <laughs> Oh, CPA is a building commissioner. Yes. Building commissioner. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Madam Chair. Councilor. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is pretty much a flatline budget from last year. Uh, unlike the other cost of living adjustments, this one, the, uh, the board and commission salaries are set by a different portion of the compensation ordinance. Um, you'll notice that the electeds are uh, exhibits A, B, and D, and the non-union employees are exhibit E. Uh, the commissioners are exhibit D. I had to think of the, uh, C, excuse me, the letter that I missed. Um, so there's, there hasn't been a change to that in a couple years, and everything else is pretty much flatlined. Or uh, if there were any re reductions, uh, which there was by $100, it's based off of current spending trends. If we raise, <coughs> if we raise that rate in the set in that we, ordinance, or yeah. raise or raise the number of people on the board from three, there would be yes, from three to five, yeah. But this is but this is based on three. That's based on three. We put up a supplemental budget if that ordinance passes, but we have to fund what the ordinance is currently at. Yeah. But it was a, it's it's a minimal change. It, Very minimal. Very yeah. minimal. I think it's. It is. I, I would say it's, it's it's a fairly minimal change, uh, as the mayor stated. Currently, um, we're budgeted for um, the board, uh, both full time members and alternate members, at twenty nine hundred dollars. Um, I'm hopeful that uh, we'll move, council will will vote uh, on the second second round. We'll go to second printing for the additional two members. We'll have to do a supplemental budget for an additional fifteen hundred dollars uh, to cover their salaries. Um, the Overall spending trend that we have for professional development and travel is, is down. Um, it's where you see the reduction of $100. Uh, our office supplies tend to be fairly low as well. Um, if we increase the, the two members, we'll have to look at um, providing training for them as well. I'm confident that we can use that existing funds between both of those line items uh, to provide the appropriate training to, to the board members. Uh, the communications historically goes over budget. Uh, we've been last several fiscal years we've budgeted at three thousand um, dollars. 
FY23, we spent $5,411. Um, that is a difficult line item to, to fund in general, um, simply because we don't know how many cases we'll have. So it can fluctuate um, pretty drastically throughout the year. Um, That's the thing with the advertising? The, the ad, it does basically the advertising and you know common common theme that you're hearing from from all departments is costs have gone up um, costs for advertising have gone up uh, again uh, and for everything that we spend spend money on they, they go up um, but we've always had money that we've been able to move and, and you know supplement that account at the end of the fiscal year uh, members get paid a stipend of seven hundred fifty dollars a year uh, so that, that would be the increase would be for two members that way. Uh, the chair gets compensated a thousand dollars, and the alternates get compensated at two hundred dollars. My only question was about the addition of two. So, was, I had nothing else. Um, I just have a question on your wish list proposal for a new city hall like equipment for twenty five thousand. Can you give me an example of what a wish list item would be? So, for city hall equipment, yeah. um, under twenty five thousand. So, uh, wish list would be uh, additional roof repairs. Um, upgrades to heating systems. Uh, we've done some upgrades in City Hall Annex. Um, we're, we also have to look at, we have an extremely dated heating system here in the main building. Uh, so we have to look at how, how we're gonna address that, air conditioning, et cetera. Oh, okay. I have no other questions. All right. Thank you. All right. Good, Thank you. Good job, Tom. Planning board. Good morning. Good morning. Um, you'll notice that this is pretty much flatlined from last year. Uh, the agents' salary and wages is split between Planning Board and Conservation Commission. Uh, that's a 3% cost of living adjustment for that position, just like all other non union employees. The board's salary and wages is set again by that other ordinance that's there. Uh, so that hasn't had a change. So that is flatlined from last year. Uh, reduction in repairs and maintenance. Uh, just based off of current spending trends. Uh, same thing with professional development and travel by $6. Um, just to, I guess, a little bit here, a little bit. We said we were gonna cut 3% of all yeah. the salary from um, each department, and that's where that came from. With a small budget like this, it's a couple dollars here and there. Uh, but happy to answer survive. Hopefully. Oh. <laughs> the planning, planning agent, is that a part-time position? Full-time. It's full-time combined with the conservation agent, so... Okay, split between different. conservation and planning. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's 50% here, 50% there. Right. Any questions? I didn't have any questions. I didn't have any one. questions. Do you have any questions on this one? No. That was very straightforward. Very straightforward. All right. Thank you. Great, thank you. <laughs> Um, so we'll go back up to Greenwood Pool. Yep. Okay. Uh, you'll notice some changes here just based off of minimum wage trends. Um, the reduction in the part-time lifeguards salary and wages is based off of our current staffing levels. Uh, and what we have here, the request was to add a couple more lifeguards based off of what we're seeing in terms of demand for use of the pool and what our staffing levels are. This is the more realistic for what we actually have and have been spending based off of our historical trends. Uh, you'll see in fiscal 24, we really only spent $34,000 uh, on salaries at the, for lifeguards. Um, everything else is pretty much level funded from last year or it follows uh, the spending trends that we have. Minor equipment, we just replaced that filter so there's less repairs that need to be made. Uh, so that's why that had a small decrease of 200 yeah, $250. Uh, aside from that, uh, things are, again, just following the trends that we currently have. Um, I just had a couple questions. Um, with the, you talked about the lifeguards and stuff. Um, is there going to be any possibility of increasing any pool hours on the weekends? Uh, probably not in this budget, but it is something that we're looking at for next year's. Um, one of the reasons it's not in this budget, aside from funding, is that the demolition of the pool, we're still waiting for that funding from the Commonwealth right now, so we don't know if it's going to be happening yet. Um, when it does, one of the things we're going to have to weigh out is do we demo the building during the summer or do we wait until after the swimming season is done? Um, so it's one of those that we have to weigh out to see if there's going to be any impacts in terms of 
uh, dust and debris and just general construction and noises with people who are utilizing the pool. So that's one of those we have to uh, way out there. So that's why we didn't really look at any hours changes this summer, uh, but it's probably going to be something we're looking at uh, in the longer term because it is a service that we do provide for the city. As this is May, <laughs> is it realistic to think that the demolition could occur before? In August. In August. Could be. Okay. Um, I, and, and, I think, and I think boys would just love to be standing at the pool watching the building come down. Yeah. <laughs> Having been one. Yeah. <laughs> um, my other question, which I, I had brought this up to you last year, is um, I think um, besides the overall condition of the outside buildings, which I know is being looked at with the capital improvement fund, to me that I think is a priority because they are just falling apart. Um, and But the outside, the storage of the chemicals. Yes. Um, last year when I did a tour, they were actually sticking outside of a building, a garage, with one of those flimsy um, orange fences around here, um, you know, I, I also think that the city needs to be looking at a separate shed or some better way of storing them because it's not safe. It's it's not the way they should be stored, especially with the amount of people around there. It's towards the splash park, um, and so I just you know whether it's however it has to be done, whether it has to be you know um, a, a separate shed has to be purchased or something that that's the securing of the chemicals um, as well as the overall pool maintenance is something that needs to become more of a to me it's a priority even the cleaning of the bathrooms and stuff um, um, because it is I don't want it to see it getting any worse shape than it already is in because it's not right now I went by last night even like the outside it's just it just doesn't look good, and it's just we. It, it, it just really needs some some attention, yeah. and um, so whether it be extending the hours or just you know going in, you know, um, we have a lot of volunteers to do a lot of things, um, and even you know if that if that has to be something that has to be concentrated on, but right now it, it really needs some focus. Um, but that's that's just my concern because I don't want to see anything worse happen to our to the the asset of the pool that we have. Uh, biggest question we get every year. The repairs have been made at the Splash Park. It is scheduled to be open this year. Yeah, great. Councilor Dunlops. I had no other questions. Councilor Brooks. Thank you. All right, so we'll go right into the Disabilities Commission, which is, falls under the same auspices right now. Currently. Okay. Uh, per the city ordinances, this does fall under the Human Resources Department. Mm -hmm. It's actually both in the job description that the council had approved back several years ago for the position of HR director, that uh, that position is the city's ADA coordinator. So that would require an ordinance change and a vote to change the job description of the council if that was to be done. Uh, but as probably one of the biggest budgets we have in the uh, city's budget here at $500 total, uh, with 200, uh, 250, uh, excuse me, $250, gotta get used to that in these budgets, uh, for professional development and travel and $250 for office supplies, Really hasn't been much that's been spent out of these traditionally, but it's small enough that we didn't make any cuts to this department. Um, I have no questions. I just think it's important for people to realize uh, who may be watching this meeting that we do have a new human resource director yes. um, who's new to this position, Amanda Morris. And so the Disabilities Commission, you know, has not met in quite a while. Um, and they do have a commission now. So as she gets her feet on the ground, hopefully they'll be um, meeting shortly. Um, so, uh, it is an important commission to the city, um, and, uh, they do have value, so hopefully they'll be reorganizing soon. I have on this budget. Oh, and I was just going to say, the, the, the reason you, you do the smaller, the small amount is just as a placeholder. Right. To yeah. say, it's okay, to, there's a little bit of money there, it's okay to spend if we need to spend. If they come back, and, and there's a couple of commissions like this, if yeah. they would come back and say, well, we have this bigger project, we want money. We deal with those issues, but for the little, if you budget it at zero, then they can't spend it all, which means we would have to, they would have to get an appropriation to buy a letter. Yeah. Which doesn't right. make sense. Yep. So I'm all right with this. Thank you. Uh, the next one is Recreation Department. Thank you uh, very much, Madam Chair. Uh, so the Recreation Department is the biggest increase that we have in the city's budget this year, mainly due to increased staffing levels for the department. Uh, you'll see. Uh, in the information that's provided uh, that really is based off of the trends that we have in current enrollment in our uh, city's recreation department. The uh, staffing levels that you see there add 
additional staff because now we have uh, enough, uh, I guess, participants in the city summer camp program that we have two sites, one at Gardner High School and one at Gardner Elementary School. That way they can meet at the athletic field in the middle uh, for their programming. Uh, we also have enough that, so that would mean, excuse me, that means we have to require two different site managers, one for the high school and one for uh, Gardner Elementary School, and additional staff at both because we have close to 300 kids participating in the program, so you have to have a certain ratio of number of students per staff members just for general terms. Uh, one of the additional things that's added this year is a part-time nurse. Reason being for that is last year we ran into issues where a parent would drop off a student and be like, oh, well, here's my student's EpiPen, here's the medications mm -hmm. they have to take for their allergies. And without a nurse on site, we cannot administer medication to a student, one, because of our liability insurance, but two, then it's on the city if the student doesn't take the medication or it's taken wrong or we can't find it or things of that nature. So there's a part-time nurse in there. And then the administrative assistant that you see in the narrative is not a clerical staff member, it's actually an additional student-aged counselor who's learning how to basically process paperwork and work on timesheets and things like that for the other counselors that are there. Uh, so I guess I, it's more business and administrative training for a counselor, if you would say, and just giving a fancy title to a student intern uh, who's going to be helping out with the recreation department over the summer. But this is the biggest increase. This is a department we actually even cut, uh, and the main reason for that is we have to meet those minimum staffing ratios for student to staff. Any questions? Any questions? No. No, you know, I think we had a presentation earlier this year with, with Mr. Port yeah, on, on what he had done and what he was planning to do. I was impressed. I was not aware of all that's going on. Yeah. And I think this, this, I think that the mayor is right and that this is something that um, has potential and we need to spend a little more money on it to make it make it work. It's, it's for the youth in this community and, and uh, should be done. So I'm fine. I have no questions. It's a, one of the few programs that we offer to our, our youth, and it's a great summer program that replaces our playground program that we had decades ago um, when, when some of us were growing up, and it's much needed, um, and I hear, hear nothing but great things, and I have to preface by saying it's not just an athletic program. There are many teachers that volunteer and do different programs. They do a STEM project. They do arts projects. They do um, music things. So it's not just athletic focused. Um, and they also receive meals during these, this program. They eat breakfast and lunch. Um, so it's money extremely well appropriated. And um, I commend Director Fort and his staff for everything they do for this program. Um, so I, and I have no further questions. Um, we'll pay, I mean, it's going to pay dividends going forward. It's keeping kids active. It sets a community here in Gardner. Um, as I always state, when we talk about the recreation department, it's close to my heart. Mm -hmm. um, with my grandfather being the recreation director in town many years ago. Um, and Director Ford has done a fantastic job in creating these programs, expanding offerings, um, whether it's the summer program or it's the um, you know, weekly athletic programs. Um, Council Mac mentioned, you know, it's not just sports though during the summer. There's you know, things like you know, they're they're out running gardens as well. They're doing uh, nature walks over at Dunn's and um, learning about uh, you know, doing science type activities. So um, I can't say enough about the program, and I hope to hopefully we can continue to fund it and expand it. I will say just as a clerical note. Um, the way these departments are split up is actually done by the council rules that each uh, department falls under each you know, different committee. Uh, recreation is one that's actually cross-listed under both public service and public welfare, mainly because we changed it this year in the budget to reflect a different name, um, that there was a recreation and then municipal recreation and historical budget. That's why you'll see now parks and playgrounds replaced the other recreation line item in the budget to try to clarify, but that wasn't changed in the council rules because that's a, a council prerogative where the budget's a executive prerogative, so I think that's something that might need to be looked at just for clarification's sake. Uh, if the rules ever get amended or looked at uh, in the long run. Uh, but that's why it's in there twice, uh, is because the DPW, before we had the recreation department, had a recreation subset, which is where they made all the improvements to the different parks and playgrounds and the Christmas lights and everything else throughout the city, that um, we changed it in the budget document that I think it needs to be just changed other places as a housekeeping matter. Thank you. Uh, I do want to mention we did meet um, at the library and uh, Director Fort was there. One of the suggestions I made is um, when I was growing up under Council of Journal Allowances, grandfather's um, recreation program, that we did do 
field trips. It was mm -hmm. the first time, you know, you went to Fenway Park and things. I did make a suggestion that through the um, Williams Rockwell Trust, mm -hmm. that he possibly put in a thing, maybe take a group of the older kids on a field trip, mm -hmm. like to the Bull Sox or something. Not all the younger kids, but some of the older ones and put in for some money because the one thing I found in, in, especially being a teacher, some of these kids, it's really exciting to get them out of Gardener for the first time and to get into other things. And I think that's one of the things that, that those funds are for. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't have to be the, the entire group of 400, but just something especially to, um, to you know, they, like it's kind of like that Disney trip for that, you know, those one see every four years for those kids to work towards for their last year of, of summer camp. Um, so I just I just wanted to um, mention that. Um, um, while you mentioned Fenway Park, just to throw that plug out there, that on Saturday, July 6th at 4 p.m. is the Gardner Fitchburg Lemonster Takeover Day of Polar Park in Worcester for the Woo Sox. Uh, so we are having a special garden uh, city day down there too. So that might be something we work into it, but we're still working out the logistics potentially on that. Great, you know. So um, the next it will just fall into is the Youth Commission. Um, which really doesn't, it's, uh, it's down as a thousand dollar budget. Yes, uh, it's a, uh, we're hoping, I'm, I'm working with getting some people as applicants for the Youth Commission this year. It's, I don't know why this has been one of the ones that's almost like pulling teeth to try to get things going, um, but uh, movies in the park is something that they used to do. I'd love to see that back, especially now that we have the new projector and sound system in Perry Auditorium, that we have a rain location for a movie in the park if we can't go in the park because it's there. Um, so there's certain things that we are looking at. What used to be paid for out of this is the rights to the movies that we show um, and different other programming that could be done through the Youth Commission. Uh, so that's something that we're going to be looking at in the current fiscal year. But just like the Disability Commission, we have to put a little seed money into it too so that we have some money there so that if these programs do start up again, we don't have to come back and ask for an appropriation for every nickel and dime that gets spent for that purpose. Great. No, I think it's, I, I, I'm glad to see, still see it there and I would love to also. Uh, because Perry Auditorium does give you an option if it was if it rained or something. Yeah. Uh, but I'd honestly love to see a like around the holiday times some type of like Christmas movie just as a family event in Perry Auditorium where the Gardner Cinemas already does the Polar Express for their showings. Could we do something like that here? Just something like that. Just get something going so that you know families have something to do and for their younger children in the area. Um, historical Commission um, again, um, it's just. A line item of office supplies? Yeah, they're again, just to keep things uh, going, they are getting more active uh, now, particularly with the new Waterford Community Center, seeing that they can create an archive, mainly because we needed a place to put all the Gardner News archives. Uh, former mayor, former city clerk Alan Agnelli have been extremely involved in that. Uh, Mr. Agnelli has a plan to do a full database mm -hmm. on the historical artifacts that we have for the city. Uh, and once that's set up, not just the Gardner News Archives going through the vaults here that are already overcrowded in City Hall to see what documents could be moved to locations to one, free up space for the city clerk, but two, find documents that we don't even know that we have in this building. Uh, so it's going to be one of those. I think it's going to be something that in the greater expenses, they'll probably come back for a one-time capital expense where you're shelving or something like that once they're there, but they're not at that point yet. So we're just maintaining the budget what it is, and then we come back for... Uh, some type of either free cash appropriation or something like that for those one-time cost expenses. Um, and I just want to mention, because I did mention this to Director Davis for the airport, um, there, it, this was just survival at the school department, um, at the high school. When we ever needed a conference table or chairs, we tapped into businesses that were either replacing their, um, their furniture or businesses that were relocating. Um, and that's where we got all our free furniture because um, we couldn't afford broken stables. Um, they're very expensive. Um, so I, I did ask her to, you know, kind of put out a plea out there because a lot of these banks and, and companies um, are, are replacing things, filing cabinets and stuff, and they're, they're looking to get rid of things and, you know, give things away. And that's a great way to get shelving, filing cabinets um, and things because she was looking for a conference table down for the um, airport yeah. um, and free is great um, and uh, you know we can always find people with pickup trucks and stuff to go pick things up and the same thing with anything at the senior center um, you know there you know we were very when simplex closed it was like a gold mine 
<laughs> of, of office equipment, um, you know, and there used to be a used office furniture store up in, in, in Jaffrey where we used to get a lot of things as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I just want to put that out there that um, if anybody's looking to get rid of things, there's a lot of offices within the city that, or, you know, or, or departments or the senior center that could make use of gently used office equipment and furniture. Um, and that would be put to great use. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, don't ever throw something out that could possibly be refurbished. Yep. Uh, lastly, I just want to include this because it was in our Welfare Commission budget, is we did receive a copy of the Bonnie Tech budget, uh, which is pretty much for information purposes only, but it was part of our packet. Um, we, we did have a presentation uh, from Bonnie Tech in, in March, on, on March 26, I believe, um, and it was presented by uh, Superintendent um, uh, Tom Brown and the um, business uh, manager um, Tammy Case, and I just want to make sure that you know that it is part of the welfare department, um, and this will is available online if anybody's interested in it um, as well. So, um, other than that, if anybody has anything further, uh, just because the school department also falls under the welfare committee, I just want to throw this out there as well. I know we had the school budget presentation earlier this week. Uh, one of the things that we talked about there was how other districts across the Commonwealth are feeling the heat of increased costs of education uh, from increases in minimum net school spending as a result of the Student Opportunity Act to other different cost increases that are there. Uh, since that presentation that we had, the town of Uxbridge and the town of Winchenden have both had their annual town meetings where they voted to not appropriate the funding for the school department for the next fiscal year. So those two municipalities uh, if you go on the news, are now facing not just layoffs, but trying to figure out how to fund the schools completely in the next school year because they just voted no on the school budgets that are there. So now these, those two towns are trying to scramble. Though that's just a small snippet of the picture that's happening. There's other places in the state that, again, we aren't having here in Gardner because we were able to plan for that. That doesn't mean our costs aren't going up. That doesn't mean that uh, expenses aren't there for us to pay for. But, I mean, the, the headline for Uxbridge yesterday was that they're laying off all school employees uh, unless they find something but Massachusetts has a thing in the Constitution for the Commonwealth that students are entitled to a free public education so they're really scrambling to find that there um, as are several other communities in Massachusetts so while we are you know cautiously optimistic for the year that is something that we're going to be having to continue to look at moving forward as costs increase and minimum minimum required spending goes up uh, that is something that we look at in the long run. And I think it's important that that was, we were presented a level services budget. Correct. Um, because the school department is still in contract negotiations. Correct. So the actual budget amount is still not set. That is correct. And, yes. the, and people need to be aware of that. Yep. That it still is being negotiated. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Chair, yes, you absolutely can. Come on up. Thank you. I got halfway to my office and realized, <laughs> gosh, I had more. <laughs> and I had more. I had clarification. Um, so a couple things. I know that we're, I, I heard you uh, reference uh, the pool. Uh, we have some, building code has some guidelines for storage of chemicals and equipment. Um, whoever the pool director is or whoever that's going to fall under, um, we will absolutely work on trying to square that facility away and do it with, with the minimal cost. Um, so any, any assistance that the building department can provide to, to other city departments, um, we're willing to do so. Um, you had a question about a wish list item of $25,000 um, for City Hall. So in addition to some heating systems, um, we're all fully aware that um, the DPW is understaffed uh, by 14 employees is, is what, what the last number that I heard. Um, DPW currently provides exterior maintenance of City Hall for us, um, specifically to the grounds, whether it's mowing grass, sharing of the shrubs, plowing the snow. Um, the, in addition to heating systems and interior uh, costs, there, there is a uh, specific piece of equipment that we would like to buy. Um, there's ongoing talks, we have ongoing talks about potentially adding um, a, a third uh, custodian that can possibly handle the exterior grounds. Um, what specifically that looks like, um, we're still in the beginning stages of that. If we were able to acquire um, 
Uh, and again, there are multiple manufacturers that can that we can use a multi-purpose piece of equipment that would allow us to do several things. It would allow us to clean up the snow um, around the entrances and around the parking areas. Uh, it would allow us to also um, plow the front sidewalks and the walkways. Uh, so when we get that real heavy wet snow, we can, we can better care for the sidewalks, for the entranceways. Um, being a multi-purpose unit, it would also allow us to do all of our own lawn maintenance. Um, when DPW comes here, they spend several hours here a, a week. Uh, so it really does uh, put an extensive burden on, on their resources. Those resources could be better used elsewhere in the city. If we can handle all of that maintenance in-house, uh, I, I think it's going to be beneficial to the city overall. Um, one of the things that uh, Commissioner Super uh, brought up that I feel like is also worth mentioning, you heard me say earlier that you know an aspect was in the job description and an ordinance change and change the job description would have to be made. Uh, one of the items that's currently been referred to the Finance Committee uh, was a change to the um, Part 1 of the City Code, the administrative legislation. That is the section of the City Code that currently controls all departments and boards and commissions of the city. In some departments, the department head's job description is codified in ordinance. Uh, in other departments, it's not. It just says the director uh, position exists. Please see job description on file with the human resources director in a better legal language than how I just cliff noted it right now. Um, one of the things we'd like to do is get the job descriptions out of the ordinance. That way we have more flexibility right now because if we were to move to change who oversees the Greenwood Pool, which right now is the Human Resources mm -hmm. Director, it would require an ordinance change. If we were to not, and then a vote of the City Council to change the job description because there's also an ordinance that says the City Council has to approve job descriptions in the city. Uh, so it's one of those things that it, that ordinance that's there is to clean things up and not just make it more easy to find things by putting all departments in one chapter and making departments sections of that chapter, same things with the boards and commissions, but also clean up and make things a lot more efficient for us to be able to handle the day-to-day -day operations by taking set job descriptions that were made in the early 2000s out of the ordinance code itself and making it so that we can make those changes uh, rather than having to go through a full two-vote process for an ordinance change and then come back for a third vote for the changing the job description to mirror the vote that was just done to change the ordinance. Um, just coming up with the job descriptions and having those be a simple, um, I guess, more streamlined vote with the council process. So that's one of the things that reasons why that larger ordinance amendment has been put forward. Can I just ask about, so winter maintenance, um, so the custodial staff of City Hall, Yes. do they shovel the steps, salt? They do, yeah. So we okay. have, so we have a then you don't have a snowblower. We, don't, we have a snowblower, okay. yeah. So, so we have a maintenance supervisor and and then a custodian. So uh, both of them, and they're also now um, doing more down at Waterford Street School. So our maintenance supervisor is now essentially the, the clerk of the works for, for Waterford Street. So he's um, kind of the keeper of the keys. He's allowing the contractors in. Th those coordinations are going through him. Um, fantastic job. Phil is doing a, a wonderful job with that. Um, what they do is they have a snowblower, so they're on call. Um, they come in, they do all the snow removal. Um, the, the main thing that they don't do is all the, the lawn care and, and maintenance. So they also perform basic maintenance duties inside City Hall. So general custodial work, um, some maintenance stuff that falls w within their scope. Um, anything major, we usually use contractors. Um, we have a snowblower, uh, again, snowblowers, depending on the type of snow you get, really should be plowed and instead of instead of snow blowed and if we can have a, a multi-purpose machine that allows them to plow snow blow and mow the lawns uh, it, it's going to increase safety around city hall in general and a lot and again allow us to do everything here and decrease the burden on, on another city department the way it was described to me is the history major who went to law school and this goes over his head it's is a tractor with a bunch of different attachments on it there depending on what we're looking at essentially <laughs> yeah yeah Thank you, that's important again. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank you. Take care. Anything else? Anything else? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you. I just. Um,